what is going on football fans it's your boy lolo i'm with mark and uh we are here with a special uh noon time uh tea time as we've been told it's tea time in the uk i don't drink tea i do drink Uh, coffee though and i got my my bubble water Mm. just trying to get rid of some of some of that bubble water i drank yesterday yeah yeah i'm surprised we're actually here (laughs) they're coming to get us anytime we talk about leeds united helicopters (laughs) kick off yeah, yesterday but, was a lot um, of fun. Yeah, so we, we've been, Mark, I've been, I've been thinking, a lot of our fans are Leeds United fans. You know that, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. and this season we we've been less focused on Leeds United, more focused on everybody. Uh, we've been giving them their fair share. Mm-hmm. Don't don't get me get yeah. it twisted. But somebody, somebody's just itching to talk. You know, <laughs> and, and I feel like we haven't been giving him enough. He's like he's like a talisman. Of yeah, our show, absolutely. Uh, someone I like to call the the LUFC, the Luf Guru of New Orleans, <laughs> uh, and that's Mr. James. I that's feel like it. he needs he needs a release. He needs to he needs to get he, it out. He, he do does, a little bitching. Do I, a little I itching. remember I remember last year uh, on when Arsenal wasn't doing so great. That uh, there was a couple of a uh, couple of ranting and raving, and uh, yes, I think the word was yes, furious. Yes, yes. Yes, I think yep. the word was furious. Lolo was furious. <laughs> I was, I was definitely furious. But first and foremost, I want to say big up, I, I up, I up, I up, I up, I up, to uh, to all the Stoop Crew members who were in the house. Um, I think first, first on the scene was Bondi today, who said, "You can see the terror in my eyes. If we don't win the next game, we are done." Mm-hmm. That's one of these doom and gloom guys right here, Mister Trousers leads need to go down on who um <laughs> back down where they belong okay mr trousers, wow, mr. Um, trousers I, i'm thinking that's lawler <laughs> lawler <laughs> just calls himself mr trousers now. that would be awesome because i will call lawler mr trousers <laughs> um mr tom says we play two teams from the current top 10 brighton and brentford in the next 10 games on this day in 2015 we lost three nil to middlesbrough that had two shots on target i'm not panicking yet uh good on you mr tom what's up ben ireland steven turner i up at least nine points from the next four um okay so so listen um this is something that i have i have been i'm going to be interested to talk to james about is when i've I've been doing my research today and reading up on on where the fans heads are at in Mm. this and to me it's either doom and gloom or relax Mm mm-hmm or as you put it, yeah, I've been I've been reading a lot too uh, about you know basically what fans are writing uh, either on our pages or on my my personal Facebook page because I definitely am linked to a lot of uh, 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 football clubs uh, through there and I see a lot of doom and gloom. Bielsa out, oh, we got to sell this guy, we got to sell that guy, and then there's the other half that they're not saying relax or anything like that. They're just like shut the fuck up. This yeah. is, we're six games in. Yeah, You know, there's a lot of football to play and there's a lot of points to be had. If it's Boxing Day and you guys are in the relegation zone, maybe, maybe kind a of little feel bit. a little tense and pensive and uh, you're at work and you can't quite concentrate because you're thinking about your club. Yeah. So, um, so all you Leeds United fans who are in the comment section right now, tell us right now, are you doom and gloom or are you relaxed or shut the or fuck up while you do your doom positives? And but uh, we know you guys process. didn't tune in to hear what what my happy ass has to say uh, now that we because we we started at the bottom for th- we were at the bottom for what three mm-hmm. weeks yeah and now we're on top of Tottenham so I'm happy about that they just won a match and so Jimenez let's bring let's bring on the, the man of the hour the the man of the hour the Luft guru of New Orleans Mr James himself what's going on please, James? Please, please. Oh, on, the, the Loof Guru. The Loof Guru. <laughs> the Loof Guru. Yeah. The Loof Guru. There you go, man. Um, so hey, all UFC let's, forever, man. All UFC l- forever. Let's get into this, James. Um, you told me that you kind of wanted to do like a state of the union, state of the club type uh, thing. Um, and and you're gonna be representing a large, a large um swath of Leeds United supporters. I think you have a fairly good head on your shoulders and you stay realistic about it. But um, so straight off the bat, let me ask you very generically, are you doom and gloom or are you relaxed boys 
or are you somewhere in the middle? I think I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm kind of 75% relaxed and don't panic. And then I'm 25% panic. Uh, you know, I kind of yeah. fluctuate between the two extremes, but I'm more, I'm kind of more in the middle. Um, six matches in, uh, look, uh, you know, We've had some tough defeats. We've had a couple of, uh, we had a red card that should not have been a red card. We had a no red card and new cap should have been a red card given on the James file in the box. Um, we had some bad calls. We had a lot of injuries, uh, you know, but we've also had some positives. I mean, look, Cresswell has been a revelation. Uh, I think all of us who watch the under 23s know that Cresswell is going to be a superstar. That guy is that guy. He's tremendous. And he's, he's the future um england uh international player i believe uh he somerville pretty much um, he pretty much handled antonio the entire match oh yeah yeah he pretty um, much pocketed antonio the entire match yeah and that little hiccup at the end was a, a combination of you know maybe shackleton kind of playing a bad angle and playing poorly on the ball and then also miscommunication between cooper and cresswell in the back so that, yeah. that you know that's, that's going to happen when you're when you keep juggling around uh Center back pairings. We saw that right uh, last day. You know, ailing at center back, a bunch of other people center back. It was a mess. So we need to get everyone healthy. Number one, uh, and then we'll see. And then we'll see what happens. I mean, I think there are some issues. Uh, I think obviously, you know, how does Rodrigo fit in? I mean, you know, he seems so much more comfortable as a striker. We saw that against West Ham than he does. You know, sort of playing in the middle and coming over and assisting Bamford is just not that kind of player. And then uh, I think that he's more – I think he's more comfortable playing strikers. So how does he fit in? I mean, look, do we rotate Bamford and Rodrigo? And then how do you justify paying 30 million quid for a guy who's a spot player and a sub? Right. You know, that's number one. Number two uh, is Furpo. You know, Furpo is having his problems with left back. I think he's been improving. I think he's getting better and better. He's athletic. Mike's getting forward. Uh, he just needs to develop a relationship with whoever is playing on that left wing. And, you know, that's, that's an issue, but he's learning on the job. I mean, basically, he's an under-23 player who's been promoted. He's, he got some run-ins with, uh, with Barcelona, uh, you know, uh, their first team. Apparently, he was a Barcelona player. And then he's, he's been thrust into an entirely full situation, you know, playing – and playing in the premiership. And, you know, it's going to take him time to adjust, but he's going to adjust, I think. Uh, I think he's going to be a good player, you know, ultimately. Um, but we have, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I mean, so that's a po that's another positive. I mean, I, I think, you know, I mean, we got to just wait for him to develop. Wait for him to develop. I think he will. Uh, then you have, you know, Dan James. All right, we, played, we paid 25 million quid for a guy. I don't know if when Harrison is healthy after, you know, I mean, Harrison obviously played this past game. Uh, where Dan James fits into the great scheme, you know. I'm like roasting. <laughs> so a little more. Sorry, James. The sun is no, peeking no, 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 out no, no, just no. through the yeah, trees and the bear. But uh, we have we have some issues that need to be worked out. I mean, personnel wise, I think, um, and we need to sort of see exactly how people fit into the system because Bielsa is definitely a system coach. So he's a system manager. So we need, we just need to see like what he's, you know, how he's willing to change and tweak things to accommodate some of these players. I mean, I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I hate to well, say, I hate, James, that's that's the biggest criticism of uh, Bielsa is that he doesn't change that he has his system. So when people are like, uh, when people are saying, "Oh, Leeds has been found out," Leeds have been found out. Marcelo Bielsa mm -hmm. told you at the beginning of the season last year who they are and what they're going to do. So what do you mean found right. out? It's like, right. oh, I found out what's inside hey, of that book by like reading Bielsa it. Doesn't Bielsa announce his lineup yeah. like two weeks ahead of time? So <laughs> you're saying how can he make these adjustments? And and he did he did actually make some adjustments towards the end of the, mm -hmm. the last season, and they became a more defensive unit. Well, they also became more healthy. Um, so mm -hmm. – what like do you see him actually changing things up? Like we saw Rodrigo in the number nine position, but that was only because Bamford couldn't play. Exactly, and and, and we'll see Rodrigo in the nine position again this weekend. So I don't think Bamford's going to be back until after the international break. So yeah, that's what I read that's, as that's well. What I'm 
Um, I'm also hearing that there was an article in the Yorkshire Evening Post about, you know, morale in the locker room. You know, players are feeling that, you know, after punch law on a Saturday, you know, they're feeling uh, a bit down. You know, this is going to be so, I mean, winning, of course, solves everything. You know, so winning is the cure-all. So we, we need, we just need to start winning again. We need to get back in form, like I said, I mean, the health of the players, getting, getting strong back from suspension. All these things are going to play into it. And in the meantime, we're going to have to play some of the under-23s. And like in the case of Crestwell and Somerville, I think you're going to see players from the under-23s become sort of permanent fixtures on the bench uh, and in the, in the matches as well. They're going to get a lot of playing time. And, you know, I'm itching to see, you know, Gelhart, you know, Joffe get uh, some yeah. significant time because, look, we need scores. Right now, mm-hmm. there's no score. I mean, Rafinha is the guy who seems to be able to put the ball in the back of the net. I mean, everybody else is, they're missing sitters right and left. I mean, I've lost count of how many sitters we've missed. And, yeah. and you know, we convert those. We're, we're having a whole, a whole different conversation right now. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, 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 it's I'm telling you, we're, we're like inches off. We're not a mile off. We're not even yards off. We're just inches away. And we just have to somehow find a way matches. And that's that's mm-hmm. it. And a lot of it's going to be converting our opportunities and not squandering them in front of net, which we've been doing on a regular basis, it seems. So, you know, right. that's another thing that has to happen. We have we have to get that killer instinct and we have to convert our opportunities. Mm-hmm. Now, now, James, um, going back specifically to Saturday, mm-hmm. I thought the first half was a slugfest. It looked like two teams on the same level. And mm-hmm. that level was high. It wasn't yeah. like West Ham looked poor. West Ham looked good. Yeah. But you guys were running them ragged. And yeah. No, it was magnificent. Our, our it best was half so of the year. much fun to watch. Yeah. And and then you guys are you guys were up, right? It was one nil. One nil at the nineteenth minute. Rafino should have been two nil. Should have been. Yeah. Of of course, Ben Rama missed an easy, uh, fairly <laughs> makeable shot and. Uh, there was so the score could have been three three at halftime. Yeah, but um, it seemed to me in the second half that leads were sitting back. You guys were were sitting back like, okay, okay, we've got the lead, let's protect it. And even when they they tied it up, it was like, okay, let's just let's just keep it at this. And that only invited pressure, um, which which wasn't when they got the goal they actually got their goal on a counter but it seemed like the the menace the attacking the pressing took a step back and that's when West Ham started getting more opportunities what do you think happened there or am i missing something i think fatigue happened i'm going to say something that i don't think is going to be very popular uh, amongst Leeds fans but i know it's something that people have thought about and that is that we have a lot of players several players on the wrong side of 30 uh, and I think in the second half, we're starting to show fatigue, or some of them are. Rodrigo doesn't really do any hold-up play. He's not like Patty is, you know. I mean, Patty does all those things, you know, off the ball and on the ball that you need that you'd be also asked of a striker, whereas Rodrigo really doesn't. And so Dallas and Cleves are constantly covering for him. And that is that leads to I mean, two guys, obviously, who are, you know, either over 30 or pushing 30. Um you know, they they get exhausted. I think that what happens is that middle field gets exhausted. That puts a lot of pressure on Calvin. So then KP ends up having to drop further back. Uh, and in order to protect our back four a little bit, that leaves a lot of space in midfield. And teams are starting to, you know, utilize that space a lot, uh, especially in the second half of matches. And you start to see that. So, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think we have some retooling to do, but it's going to not happen until probably next summer. Uh, and we finally start to retool our midfield. But I think that has a lot to do with it. I think it's, it's just fatigue. Yeah, I agree with you, James. I do see that the, the, the players seem to, you know, where last year you would watch and from, from whistle to whistle, leads would just go, 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 go. This season it seems like there's a point, and I don't know where in the match, but suddenly you can just kind of see it slow down and bog down. I don't necessarily think it is is age as much as there were many Leeds players that had a very, very busy summer. Yeah. Uh, you guys had like, what, eight, nine players in the in the Euros? Yeah, we had quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, that, 
I, I, I don't. I know you don't agree. See, I think the extra matches. Ago, I, it's months Calvin ago. Calvin Phillips now. played every single match, and he's yeah. one of the best. Players I, I the wasn't. Match. I didn't uh, necessarily uh, single him out. <laughs> but he's a youngster. But he's a he's yeah, a youngster. Yeah. I will uh, say, if you're an older player playing that schedule is brutal. Yeah. You know, and and it's wear and tear, and it and it eventually it's catches up to you. Sure. No? <laughs> Scoot over that way. It's too hot over here. You need, you need the, sun, the sun keeps finding me through the, through the tree. Um, you're, like a human, me, you're like a human sundial. I know. It's still there. You were just sitting here in the dark. How did? <laughs> all dark. <laughs> Let me address some of these comments because not everybody agreed with me. And, and as I said, I may have been wrong about it. Um, but Bobby says, not sure about that, Lolo. We were leaving 2v2s at the back right through the second half. Okay. Um, mm. And then... Um, uh, somebody said, yeah, Soren. What's up, Soren? Haven't seen you in a while. He said second goal was on West Ham counter. Yeah, I, I said that. So, yeah. so maybe maybe what I'm thinking then, maybe it wasn't a dip in, in pressing. Maybe it was just the creativity that Rafinha brings that seemed to, uh, I don't know, it just didn't seem the same as as the as the first half of the of the match and and maybe maybe you're totally right it's just fatigue I mean, at that point they took Rafina off at like what the 60th minute yeah somewhere and Dan James there? came off at halftime so those right. two somewhat I was, creative uh, players James, yeah and I, still, and I still think too like, like I was saying I, I still think too that players in the second half at least this has been my observation throughout the course of the season so far, is that their two just are worn out in the first half difficulty Track second half, so teams on the counter attack are you know getting some you know, having some success. So mm -hmm. that's you know something that's something that we need to worry about. But you know again, KP usually cleans all that stuff up anyway. So he's, right. he's usually back there cleaning it up. But you know he's one person. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, I was. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say on you know on on Saturday we had a situation where I mean Ailing was out. So Shaq's just playing that right back position. I mean, I like Shackleton a lot. I mean, he brings a lot of energy uh, to the team. And uh, but at the same time, you know, he's not ailing. Ailing just has such a you know, ailing as a I don't know. I mean, he's lost a step here and there, but he's, his defensive instincts are. I mean, he, he's able to kind of anticipate where people are going on the end stuff, and you know, other other teams attack and be able to intercede. Stop passes, intercept passes. Uh, you know, we've seen him a million times. How many times you see shots? Ways there seems like mm -hmm. all the ground. Well, Shaq's had a really good game, but you know he's not able. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And I, I thought actually, particularly Shackleton and um, Cresswell had had fairly good games mm -hmm. up until the last moment, really, yeah. where where it was just a dip. They, you know, Antonio really hadn't done much for the entire match, and then he shows you. Uh, but I mean, the, the whole buildup as well. The pass was great to him. He the, controlled his it. Second touch. His second touch. His oh finish. My it was. It was all very, very good. But I think somebody, I forget who said it in the comments, but um, they said now he knows you can't have a lapse in concentration for even ten, 10 seconds. seconds. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, because you'll be punished. So James, let me let me ask you. Um, since you're not all doom and gloom, you do see things going. And, mm -hmm. and I will say this is the most leads like uh, this was the most leads like match match that I've seen this season, right. it, especially the first half in yeah. particular, um, where I was like, OK. And yeah, it was, and I it, think I and it wasn't against that. It was the best I've seen of leads all season long. Yeah. Was and, that first half. And it wasn't against Norwich or somebody. Right. It was against a top, a top a, quality, quality team. Squad. Um, I thought that was the half of the season by far. Yeah. So looking ahead, I think you guys have Watford next. Um, uh, is it what? Watford, yeah, Watford and then Brentford, yeah. I think. Uh, so no, it's so like Watford and then uh, Southampton, I believe. Okay, so what... What match are you looking at right now of like, okay, this is one where we can we can turn it around. L like for Arsenal, it was definitely the North London Derby. If we can turn that around, it will reinvigorate the fan base. It will it will give the players on the pitch a, a feeling and a sense of community of be of having that feeling. Now you guys don't have any uh, you know, you don't have your Sheffield Wednesdays and Sheffield Uniteds that that you could 
play more of a Derby type uh, match against. But is there a team that you're looking at like, if we can smash them, that can turn things around? Is any any one of those coming up? Well, I want to look. I want to look at your father heads. So we have I mean, our next nine matches. Our next, basically, our next nine league matches. Um, in my opinion, they're all winners. Uh, Tottenham. They include Brentford. Um, but I think they're. Uh, I think I think we can beat these teams. I mean, that's leading up to, of course, our December 11th clash with uh, with Chelsea. But you know, I mean, I. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I look at, I mean, I look at the next match. I mean, I look at Watford. I mean, you know, we. we Look, there's no rivalry match really coming up. I mean, these are all matches that we just need. There, yeah, there you go. We just, we just, we just yeah, need they to both have to be in the center. We need to get that, that, that. We need to get that under our belt, and then I think we'll be fine. But we just, it has to happen. We have to play that uh, that complete match and and beat somebody like we like we're capable of beating them. I mean. We could go over there and you know, beat Watford, you know, I don't know, 4 nil. I mean, we had that mm-hmm. capability. I want to see us do that. I want to see us – to me, it's, 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 a, it's about how we win. You know, I want to, I want to see that free-flowing, the also style, and I want to see goals, yeah. uh, and not just by Rafinha. I want to see other other players – I want to see Patty get off the snide and start, you know, getting some, some goals in there. And, yeah. you know, it's just – yeah, I mean, I, to me, it's one match at a time. I mean, I can't look too far in advance. Just one match at a time. But if you look at the next nine, uh, they're they're winnable. I, you know, we get fifteen to twenty points from those nine matches. I mean, I think we'll be fine. You know, I think we'll be yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. So heading into, like I said, the December eleventh clash with Chelsea. So you know, we'll see. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 for me, the 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 one that is, you know, the one that you have to go out and smash is the next one. Yeah, you know, every week. I, just next <laughs> every one week. right now. You yeah. take it one week at a time. Next you go in and you smash them. You're not looking ahead. You you just go out because you guys you need you need a win desperately. And, oh, yeah. and maybe not desperately. Desperately might be a strong word, but I think you really need a win uh, to kind of you know crack the crack the bottle, so to speak. You know, um, you know, and and what I'm seeing from Leeds is night and day from last season. I talked about it a little bit at happy hour where through six games last year, you scored 12 or 13 goals. Patty Banford had six or seven. And now those numbers are completely gone. And one of the things that was heralded last year about Melier was his clean sheets. Yeah. He he doesn't have a single one. Now that, that being said, Melier to me has been your number one player. I I think so. Melier has kept even even though you haven't won a game in in six, you got a couple draws and and it's been relatively respectable, you know, mm-hmm. because the amount of chances, the amount of amazing saves he's had, oh, yeah. it's every game. It's every oh, yeah. game. If he's no, no, even he's... a little bit off, like you're losing four or five nil at every one of those matches. Yeah, what was it? Uh, two weeks ago, it was. Was it was it Newcastle two weeks ago? Newcastle, it would and I thought Max, I thought Maximan was going to rip his arms off yeah. with his shots. How how he's not bruised in his he was, hands? He was probably Mali elbows was deep in, in in Slurpees. And then he gets a then, elbow yeah, then, from then, Mikhail Antonio, they the and then from gets Antonio, up. You know? Oh, yeah. he took a beating, and I I mean Antonio should have gotten I red loved it. I didn't love the beating he was taking, but I loved the way he was standing up to it. And he got back up. And you I know? tell you what, seeing and he got he stinker... got bloodied a little bit, and he was just like ready to go. He's like, "Fuck it." Yep. Seeing the stinker that uh, Hugo Loris put up last night, <laughs> um, you got to think the French uh, national team is looking at Melier like, oh, "Okay, most definitely okay, are at all right, Melier. son." Um, oh yeah, he's no, he's he's special. I was telling you before. I mean, uh, you know, the, the players that I can't, I think we can't afford to lose for any. Period of time, obviously, Melier and KP. That's it. I mean, even even Rafinha, if he was injured, now with the acquisition of Dan James, I feel a little bit better about him. Maybe missing a couple here and there, but KP and Melier are absolutely indispensable players. Um, so yeah, he's Mel, Melier is Melier is a he's a, a star in the making. <laughs> The um, sun is killing me. I'm like yeah. Casper. Can we split the difference? I'm a milky no, bastard. Look at me. I tell you, you need an awning, man. Get an awning. 
<laughs> no one has an awning in Brooklyn. No, it'll, it'll get stolen. <laughs> exactly. Someone yes. will turn it into someone will turn it into an extra. And have room. an you hold it all over your head. <laughs> um I, I saw Naji this morning. Actually, it was yeah. so like like somebody was mentioning how the stoop looks like Sesame Street, and it, it really is. Like Fantastic. my my daughter walks up and down the block. All of her friends that live on the block, she'll just go up to somebody's window and start yelling, and then they'll poke their head out of the window and then come running down. But this morning, we we're on our bike going taking my daughter to school, and I'm going down Seventh Avenue, and I see Naji getting into his car, and I'm like, Naji! And we just high five <laughs> while we're going. And I just kept going. I was like, this is like the intro to some movie, and that wouldn't have looked real. Like, they would have gone, nah, let's cut that. That that doesn't really happen. And I'm like, oh, it, happens. This, it just happens. It happens. People talk all the time. You see them. <laughs> and my daughter, is know. that Naji from the stoop? Oh, that's like, Eagle yep, Eye. Naji. Yep. <laughs> Um, so it's funny. <laughs> um, okay, so um, uh, so now we've got the people talking like, oh shit, Leeds United are in the relegation zone. And you saw, I, I even threw it up on the on the thumbnail. I put the the bottom three, uh, you know, because it gets people mad and they click on it. Um, but you are technically, Leeds United are technically in the relegation zone. But as people have been saying here, uh, as Peak Meditation just said, if we were relation fodder, relegation fodder, uh, would have lost to Burley and Everton and Burnley even. That Burley um, team is pretty that fierce. That Burley team is quite Burley. Um, they are quite Burley, Burnley. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but then somebody, somebody else said, oh, it's Peak Meditation again. Three teams relegated, Norwich, Southampton, and Watford. Leeds will be near to bottom, but goals will keep us safe. When it comes down to it, the big question is, are there three other teams that are worse than you? And I would say 1,000% there are three other teams. Oh, definitely. I, I honestly think there's only one right now that is absolutely so awful. Uh, you know, last year it was, it was Sheffield United. You saw them early in the season. You're like, oh, these guys are going to be awful. And the only team right now that I see, again, because we're only six games in, yeah. and that's Norwich. Yeah. Norwich looks awful. Yeah. They just look terrible. Yeah. You know, so yeah. – you know, I just I, – I don't – I think we're going to run into a case of, of last year where they're like, there are going to be two teams. Eventually, they're just going to be absolutely awful. And then there might be this, like, you know, like like um, like Fulham last year. Fulham came really, really close to staying up. And I think there's going to be that team, and it's going to be tough. It is not going to be Leeds. But I, I see that I, as Newcastle. I, I keep it, saying it the could best, be worst team. It could be Crystal and Palace. It could be Fulham and West Brom. We're, we're – they seemed good sides that just could not I'd win. See, I felt I saw I felt West Brom was just absolutely horrid to watch. Uh, but you know, I just you know going back to to smashing games and getting something in and and finally getting that win under your belt. I I want I want Leeds to get back to the point this season where when you see them come up on the schedule, you say, oh, that's a tough one. Because right now, yeah. when I look at leads, when I look at people's schedule and the, the their team schedule, and they've got leads, I don't. I, I'm just like, oh, they're gonna play leads, you know? Yeah. I, I just, you know, when I look at the when I look at the the leads matchup, I just this season so far, I haven't gone. That's gonna be a tough game. And you know, that's gonna I, be a great game. I think it comes down to scoring because it's just scoring. Like your defense, it's not like you're giving up a shit ton more goals than you did last season. Everybody knew. Last season, if you want to beat Leeds, you're probably going to have to put up two or three or even four because they're going to score a bunch. Um, yeah, and, they're, and, and both times it's due to the same reasons because basically, you know, our center back pairings have changed so much because of injuries and suspensions that we're never able to feel like a regular center pairing. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's, and, then, and the same that happened last year when we we're scoring goal. I mean, when we're getting a lot of goals scored against us, and the narrative was is that our, our our defense is poor, which is not really the case. I don't think. I think it's just a matter of getting center backs healthy and out of suspension, and having them, you know, actually get to play with each other and have that communication back there because that's what's lacking. And then you saw what happens later on in the season when center backs are healthy, Ooh. once they get to play regularly. And our defense improves drastically. I mean, it's just a, you know, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I think that's going to happen. I mean, they're going to get healthy, hopefully. 
Uh, you know, I mean, Urente kind of worries me because he has like soft tissue injuries, and like I've like I've told you numerous times, those things link. You know, and soft. Like, a, like a hamstring, a hamstring is never a hundred percent after you tear it. Yeah. You know, no. um, so it's just uh, it's that always concerns me. You know, I mean, whether you know, he's going to have problems with that for the rest of his career. Uh, Cock, I don't know what what his deal is. Uh, you know, I bet it was but, a hip injury. Cork? Yeah, I thought so yeah. too. But I, yeah. And that, but, but that I, I don't didn't keep you down for a while. I mean, it kept Potence yeah. out of the, Daniel Potence out of the Wolves for three, you know, the last three months of the season. Yeah, and there are all sorts of hip injuries. I don't, I don't know the specifics of this one, you know. So it's uh, yeah. I mean, look, you know, getting back to like the the tendency of, of Leeds fans to eat our own. Uh, you know, the it's a very passionate fan base as well. Always going to have tend towards the extremes of issue. Uh, with regards to the to the team, anything involving the club. So yeah, I mean, you just got to, you know, you endure. I mean, I you know, we endured it for for 16 years, you know, and I, you know, wandering in the wilderness. So we can make it through this. We'll make it through it. You know, it's just a matter yeah. of, it's like it's like you said, it's a matter of getting that first win under our belt, learning what it feels like again, getting the morale of the team up, and getting that intimidation factor. Like you said last year, when teams looked at us on the schedule, no matter who they were. They could Man City. I'm sitting there saying, I don't want to play this team. You know, I don't want to play them. They're going to run us all over the place. And now, I don't know if, if we're losing that intimidation factor a little bit. Um, you know, we got to get we got to get that back. You know, we got to get that attitude back. You know, we had that attitude last year. We need it back. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. In and as Bobby says, not a joke. He's talking here. Uh, cock was a pubis injury. Oh, that's right. That's right. I that's can right. see where the joke might lie. Uh, I see what you did kinda, there. It's kind of <laughs> easy there, but he says it's not a joke. Um, but um, so, yeah, cock pubis. has a fractured pubis. That just sounds that's like a bad a fractured pubis. You know, pubis I, I, if I, I'm going to say this, I, I don't know when that injury occurred. Uh, but as uh, someone whose father-in-law uh, last winter uh, broke his pelvis and uh, fractured his pubis area. Uh, it, he's still on, he's still on a walker. It's, it's a no joke injury. I hope the best for cock that he comes back healthy whenever he does come back, but this is not something, uh, that you're going to be able to rush. Yeah. 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 So, um, thank goodness but, for the emergency of Cresswell. Yeah. yeah. What, what I was going to get to with that, not a joke thing is, is something that I, that's missing for me with Leeds United is the. And, and it comes with winning and it comes with scoring goals, but it's the smiles. Right. Um, last season, the the smiles on the faces, the the fun that they were having on the pitch was it, it translated to the to the crowd. It tra translated overseas, you know, mm -hmm. to us watching it. Um, and it was it's fun. Just not there right now. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, yeah. that'll, that'll come with winning and scoring some goals, but right now the frustration is sitting in. And I think, um, uh, Ben said it, uh, said something to the case of, I'm not worried it will be fine, but the longer we're in the relegation zone, the harder it is to climb out, the more it piles on. And, and, and to me, it's it, the more the negative, the less joy can be had. You know, you end up scoring a great goal and you're like, okay, good. Finally, move on. Let's get another one. Instead of Luke, you know, pulling his hair out and, rah, 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 you know, like. Yeah. And it's, so, so it's got to come soon. Yeah. And it's psychologically there exhausting. Go, I nailed it. Finally. You know, it's, psychologi it's psychologi psychologically exhausting to be in the relegation zone. Because the pressure just continues to build and build and build. And teams either crumble under the pressure like Sheffield United did, uh, or they respond to the pressure. And so now we're going to see like what players are going to emerge. This is the sidewalk, bro. Yo, you can't drive your fucking motorcycle on the sidewalk, douche. <laughs> Oh, here. are you kidding me? Yeah, no, no. it's it's you know ever fucking since the, and he's looking up at the at ever the since the no, no, no. pandemic, delivery I, delivery drivers on the street have just escalated to 
to the nth oh. degree and it's going the wrong it's, way it's, it's but just, on the sidewalk on the actual it's, it's, sidewalk it's, it's a bit retarded just to have to <laughs> constantly dodge these delivery drivers um, yeah you know i oh, I, I, I think one. also you know as far as being <laughs> I just you know, like the, that you can yell whatever you want at people, and he didn't. I know. Uh, he I, know. Hate, uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, it's you know the, the the thing about relegation in this particular case, and the pressure of staying up, is that most of your squad, ninety percent of your squad, knows what that's like. Knows yeah. to be sitting in relegation. So for however long they've been with the team up until last year, you know. So I'm sure for a lot of them that you know that. This was their first taste of Premier League, uh, of the top tier. You know, and that too is probably weighing a bit on their conscience. It's like, God, we don't want to get that. And and so maybe yeah. you're overthinking everything. But again, it's still only game six. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, you know, players are going to have to step up. They're going to have to, you know, like, like you know, you hear all the time, you know, players only meeting. You know, get everyone together and say, look, you know, there's only six matches in. There's a lot of time to turn this around. I mean, we have a whole, practically a whole season left. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a bunch of winnable matches coming up. You know, let's get out there, play our style, and you know, play the system, and believe in what we've you know going to accomplish and do it. You know, I mean, it's just uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like I said, who, who is that? There's a lot of pressure, uh, the wear and tear psychologically. I mean, it's just you want to get out of of that. You know that point that position that relegation zone you want to get out of there as quickly as you possibly can i mean i i can understand that i mean i don't, I don't want to hover around there if we're hovering around relegation zone by march or april i mean you'll you'll see me being you know a, a nervous nelly like the mm -hmm. rest of, like the rest of the two yeah. and bloomer you know it's gonna happen yeah. And you know, maybe like like you were, you guys were both just saying, and somebody said you had a good point as well. Hey, we're not doing too bad, Mark. <laughs> um, but uh, most of these players haven't experienced the pressure of being in the relegation zone. And you know what? Maybe it's a good thing in the end. Maybe uh, you know. Uh, to me, it's always better to be in the relegation zone in the beginning of the year rather than at some point later in the year. That's right. a kind of a stupid statement, but but it, it can it can motivate you in a better way. I mean, look at Tottenham sitting top of the league for three weeks. What did mm -hmm. it do for them? They got cocky and they lost their last, their next three. So, um, and they're all giving up three goals in each one. Three, 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 three. three. That's for all those three. people who bought Hugo Loris to be their keeper. Is he, is he, he number up, three? He was like, the, <laughs> he had the most points he for a playing while. like a third uh, stringer. He's terrible. Anyway, um, what, what was I going to say? But, but yeah, maybe it, it, shows these guys that hey you're not invincible staying up we did it last season it is not guaranteed yeah yeah, yeah. Stop, and we did stop thinking about last... europe and think about yeah. this fucking game in in leeds or in london or mm -hmm. wherever it is yeah um so james you were talking about uh player only meetings coming together yeah. somebody saying that um who is that guy who's that guy who will do that is it luke ailing is it bamford is it Calvin Phillips? It, who who is that guy? Who do you see? Well, I, th I think it, you know I think Coops is probably the guy to do it. I mean, he's the captain. You know, that's, that's kind of mm -hmm. his duties is to right. you know rally the troops. And uh, you know, I mean, he's going to have to be the, he's going to have to play the role of captain. And by the way, I thought I, I didn't think Coops had a bad game on uh, against West Ham. I thought he actually played pretty I well. He played well. Um, and uh, you know he has these games. I mean, he's, you know he's, he can be consistent, but I think for the most part, you know he's, he's not bad. Uh, he's serviceable back there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that Coops has to has to be that guy. I mean, Coops has to get people together and KP. You know, they're the leaders, uh, and you know, say, look, you know, that we all the goals that we want, they're still attainable. You know, this is six matches yeah. in. Absolutely. I mean, even even a, a top seven or eight finish is still attainable. These things have not disappeared from us. So you know, let's just regroup and forge ahead. You know, exactly. onwards and upwards. You know, stiff upper lip. All that all that British stuff. <laughs> so exactly. you, know, you got to do it. And and with all the talk of look, this league this league belongs to Chelsea, Man United, uh, Man City. Or Liverpool. Well, that party, well, we sit here. We sit here on a Monday where Brighton can top party, the league. That party about ready to be broken. If up. Brighton beats Crystal Palace in a few hours, 
they will sit in top on the top of the league. And that is so crazy. That is so crazy. Yeah, I'm not, um, we, I'm not, we, I'm not we, sold on Brighton. We've all we've already you know had They're winning the games they should. <laughs> we've already yeah, had no. the team that was in the top of the league for three weeks and the team that was in the bottom of the league for three weeks switch places. And yeah. now now yeah. it's we have Brentford doing fantastic things. They're they're sitting in like ninth place, uh, eighth place right now. Mm -hmm. As much as the standings matter right now, but. Um, it's going to be a topsy-turvy league because it isn't one or two teams that are doing it. Leicester right. can't even win a match right now, right. you know? So, and, and do we honestly believe Leicester is not going to finish in the top 10? No. No. I mean, no. Or West Ham, like West Ham is right. going to make a push yeah, for, yeah, yeah. yeah they know, draw to Southampton, but I mean, for real. Yeah, we keep bringing it up that it's, you know, we're only a game early six. Days, early this, days. Right now is where you know it one win will pop you up five spots on the table exactly. yeah. you know so it's 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 Arsenal are like, like six points out of first yeah exactly which is like, you know that's how, and they were they started they started awful yeah and we're only and, and, and think of this factor as well we're only six matches into full stadiums mm -hmm. to full grounds again yeah so and that makes yeah. a difference you know players have to adjust now to having to playing in front of a, of a, of a full stadium Mm -hmm. And that's you know, that's another that's another issue. Uh, I think. I mean, it's yeah. it's 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 an adjustment period. So I think we're going to be for the first part of the season. We're going to be in an adjustment period. I think there are going to be some ups and downs, definitely. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, like I said, I mean, the, the players are just going to have to figure it out. I mean, they're going to have to figure out what to do, and and uh, you know, be also the coaches are going to have to figure out uh, adjustments that can be made, tweaks that can be made here and there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. like I said, it's not a matter of overhauling the system. It's just a matter of tweaking it uh, and figuring out how to utilize some of the players that we have. Uh, it's, which I'm sure they're working on, you know. I mean, I, I trust I trust all these people calling for Bielsa, Bielsa's head, saying that Bielsa's done, you know. He, you know, his, his system has been sussed out. Get out of your mind, it's, it's, no. Out of on. your mind, you we're know, sitting with Arteta, like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. Who, who, who comes in and does a better job? That's what yeah. I keep telling Arsenal See, fans. Like, who comes in and fixes things? I yeah. say the same thing about Leeds, you know. Yeah. Who, who the fuck is going to come in and do a better job? Yeah, it's, it's like, get out of here. But those are the extreme. It is, only, I've only seen a few people actually say that, and, they, and that's like the far extreme of the doom and gloomers. I mean, there, 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 there are gradations in the doom and gloomers too. You know, there's like mm -hmm. the, the real far extreme. And then there's kind of, you know, the, the middle, you know, kind of sensible types, but yeah, you know, we've been through this before and, you know, I'm, I'm paranoid. I mean, it's, it's going to happen again because this is the life of a Leeds fan. And it's, you know, a lot of ups and downs, you know, uh, and right now it's a down period. Big so Sam, better. shut up, Adriano. Big Sam, get out of here. Big Sam, come on. Is he even looking for work? <laughs> come on. Big Sam What's... doesn't have to look for work. He just waits till halfway through the season. One of the three relegated uh, relegation teams will call him. Don't worry, he'll be uh, he'll have a that, job. That, but that record's broken, right? You know, well, we'll see. Him yeah, yeah. We'll Wait, see him soon um, enough. Yeah, it won't be it won't be with weeks though. <laughs> there's no. uh there's. There's two players that that I I wanted to discuss with you, James, because um, and, and I would call them both um, ex experiments. You know, you continue to say the Rodrigo experiment is over. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, I've I'm said that since last year. I'm concerned with the Tyler Roberts experiment. <laughs> well, that's. Yeah, because but, I do enjoy his energy. I think he's he's leads. He's definitely leads. It's just mm -hmm. a bit of quality that he's shown I, the lack of. I and then a kid like Somerville comes here. in, and you're like, wait, they had this fucking dude. Yeah, and James and, and I talked and he about switches it for, during uh, the for game. Rafinha, we much talked better. about that during the game with when when Roberts came on for Rafinha. I immediately text you and was like, I thought they would sub Somerville. Because yes. that's a like yeah. for like. Me too. Yeah. And Roberts isn't. No. Roberts, I feel, should go in for Rodrigo. Exactly. And maybe that happens if Rafinha is fully fit. But I think they're, you guys are being very, very, very delicate um, with Rafinha. Um, yeah. I think delicate. you have to. Be. You have to. You have to. 
Yeah, yeah. I think the physios have kind of told them that you know he's worth like sixty minutes and sixty minutes tops, yeah. and that's pretty much it for now. That's kind of like the limit he can play. But you know, he impacts the game for those sixty minutes, man. <laughs> he's something. He's still something to see. He's worth the price of admission, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, getting back to Roberts, I think Roberts and Robert, the insertion of Roberts into the matches is, is to me, symptomatic of just how shallow our bench is as far as known talent, you know, quality premiership type, you know, subs at least. Uh, we just don't have that. I mean, you know, he also likes a small squad. Uh, we have, I mean, our, our bench was even last year had a lot of under 23s on it. Uh, that hardly ever get in, uh, at least last year. Uh, and so, man, I, I just don't, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, we need a, that's, but that's the Elsa thing. We need a deeper squad. We need guys coming off the bench who you can insert, who at least have some premiership experience, maybe experience some success in the premiership. I mean, but you, other teams have it. We don't. I mean, we just, for whatever reason. And I think Robert, right now at least, is a guy that Bielsa trusts coming in off the bench. I mean, he knows that he's going to go in there. He's going to put in a good shift and, uh, you know, he's going to run around and he's going to, he's going to play hard at least. Uh, he may not, you know, impact the game in any meaningful way, but he's going to, he's going to go in there and do his thing uh, and be also trusting. And be also doesn't really, for whatever reason, doesn't trust a lot of the other people on the bench. So therefore you never see him, even though, like I said, the under 23s have been, you know, a, a huge part of our bench since the beginning of last season. I, I just, um, yeah, I know mean, you're right. I mean, I, 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 but I can understand it given what we have. You know, we have a lot of unknowns and we have a known. <laughs> you know, Roberts, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. Roberts is the known. And now, once Harrison is back fully from COVID, we're going to have Dan James on the bench, I'm pretty sure, because I don't see how they utilize both of them in there. Uh, and I think that eventually, like I said, you know, the Rodrigo experiment needs to go the way of and. Rodrigo should be on the bench, and they should rotate Bamford and Rodrigo in. Uh, something like that has to happen. And now with Bam with Patty coming back from injury after the all after the uh, international break, I almost said All Star break. Thinking American sports, uh, <laughs> <laughs> international break. Uh, I think it's it might take him uh, you know a couple matches to get back into you know game shape and uh, get back in the swing of things. So maybe you know Rodrigo's. Some you know, some time something for him, kind of like the Feeney. Maybe they'll play Bamford for sixty minutes and put in, uh, you know, Rafinha, I mean, put in um, Rodrigo for you know thirty. I mean, I don't know. So well, we'll see. It, like to me, that's something I always say about his club, about Wolves. Is to me, don't start Triore. Yeah. Bring him on when people are getting dead legs and just have him run at fools. <laughs> yeah, uh, he did do that two years ago and it worked. And it, and it worked. Um, so, so like, I, I keep thinking, why run Rodrigo and Bamford together when, they, you know, it's not like they have a great partnership. No. Why not play one and then bring the other? You know they both have incredible work rates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bamford may not be the fastest, but he will run from end to end. Rodrigo's a bit faster. He will run from end to end. Why not switch them out as soon as one starts to get a little tired? And that pace never slows. Yeah. No. I know they're not the same type of striker. I So maybe that's it. And I am not Bielsa. So um, I'm just saying maybe yeah, that. And, and, and then Tyler Roberts can be mediocre in the middle for, for a whole 90. <laughs> but at least. Yeah, you know, right, right, right. Yeah, you know. No, no, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Rodrigo, the problem with Rodrigo is obviously, like I said before, he doesn't do the same things that Patty does. I mean, you know, he doesn't do – his hold-up play is just not there. Um, he doesn't track back like Patty does. Uh, and that's – those are issues that have led to Dallas and Cleach having to, you know, cover for Rodrigo on many occasions, uh, you know, in front of in front of KP. So, I mean, I, I – yeah, it's um, – yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think I think Rodrigo, you know, unfortunately is a thirty million quid uh, bench player. Uh, I think that he's going to have to come off the bench and 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 sub in for Patty uh, and Dan James. Like I said, another one. Uh, maybe Dan James ultimately supplants Harrison or someone else. But for the time being, I think Dan James is better coming off the bench because, like I said, I mean, he also does the same thing. I mean, he provides a lot of energy. He runs his ass off. You know, uh, works really hard. 
uh, you know, that would strengthen our bench. Put Rodrigo and Dan James on the bench. And at least we have now, you know, three players that we can bring in, you know, with Roberts, Rodrigo, and James, who, you know, are serviceable. Yeah. We know they can do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so out out of all of these young kids, what, what are the names that we always hear, Mark? We hear Cresswell. We hear Somerville. Somerville we hear Gellhart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so out of all of these guys, who, who do you see at the end of the season? Who do you think is cements their, their spot into the starting 11 by the end of the season? I would say Somerville, I, uh, Somerville or Cresswell. I would go with um, Cresswell. Cresswell looked, he did not look 19. I'll tell you no. that much. Yeah. I had, when you said we have this 19 year old named Cresswell in my head, he looks like uh Billy Gilmore. You know, yeah, Billy yeah, Elliot. Yeah. Which, fucking Phil Foden for that. Matter. I don't know how old Phil Foden is. I want to say he's like 19. 19. Shut up, really? No, but he looks like he looks like he's someone you know, some kid hanging out in the smoking yard in, in high school. You know, see, Soren says none, nobody, and Ben is the opposite. All three. Karen C. What's up, Karen C? So good to get you on a live show because we're on a little bit earlier during tea time. Um, did you know Cresswell's father used to play for Leeds? I do because they mentioned it. I liked hearing a, he's a second generation Leeds lad. And yeah, I was like, that is how year. fucking cool is that? Um, you yeah. need another second generation to come in. Um, right. Mr. Holland uh, yeah, to come in. That would be awesome. That's not happening. Sorry. You never know. Yeah, yeah I think well, maybe in like 10 years, maybe in 10 years time, you know. You yeah, Cresswell finish. is a beast. He's built like a tank. He's huge. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. why, he's, why but is he's he all not? upper body too. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. He's kind of like Luke Shaw that way. Yeah, yeah he's a big dude. For Tom here, he says Cresswell has the best chance purely because of the injury rate of the lads in yes. front of him in the pecking order. Yeah, but I was going to say the think, same thing. I mean, I think, if, think if, Cox, if than Cox than injury is as bad as, you know, Mark <laughs> said it could be. Uh, and Urente continues to have, you know, injury issues. Uh, you know, this is, you know, getting up to age. Then I think maybe, you know, you go with a uh, tandem back there, Cresswell and uh, Strike. You know, you go for a, uh, a youth movement at center back and just let them develop a relationship. And it happens. I mean, I think it'd be quite the tandem. And, you know, I mean, you can do. And, you know, Oh, the guy's got all the ability in the world. I mean, he's like a – to me, he's like a combination. I was thinking of, like, Ben White and, you know, maybe like, uh, you know, Patty Kisnorbo. <laughs> I mean, he's, 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 he's physical. He's very – but he can take the ball pitch, uh, comfortable with the ball at his feet. And, uh, yeah, I like, uh, I, like, I like Cresswell a lot. But he's, he's got some physicality to him as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, we're coming we're coming up to the end of the show right now. So I just wanted to give everybody in the audience a chance to if, if you guys have any questions or comments that you would like James to address or Mark and I, because, um, you know, we are here. We are here. Um, but uh, if there's anything you guys want to ask James or get his opinion on, uh, now's the time to do it. Um so, uh, and it, also, James, if there's anything else you would like to say, any any kind of closing statement of your state of the club address. <laughs> well, my, my closing statement would just be, look, you know, that let's calm down. Let's let the players and the coaches do their thing. Let's see if people get healthy. Uh, and, you know, like I said, nine matches in front of us, all very winnable matches. The bad we play Brighton. Brighton's one of the teams we play, by the way. And we play them, unfortunately, in Brighton, where we never really played very well. But, you know, um, we'll see. I mean, these are all – you look at them on paper, we can win these matches. I mean, we could end up with, you know, maybe 20 points at the end of it, in which case we got 23 points heading into that Chelsea match. So it's not a – you know, it's not the end of the world yet. Uh, yes. You know, I mean, ask me again in, you know, March – and we might, I might have a different response, but right now, yeah, I, mean, we're, uh, I think we're okay. Uh, we have some things that we have to work on, but we'll be fine. That's good. I, th- I think a lot of our Stoop crew members were a little concerned after happy hour last, not this past one, but after the Newcastle match, <laughs> when you were you were selling everybody. You put a price tag on KP. <laughs> you put a price tag on Rafinha. I was like listening. I, I remember I was like packing up gear. I was working, and I had you guys in my ear, and I was like, 
James is selling everybody. Um, there's a yeah. good way that you know United is gonna Man United is gonna come in hunting for Calvin Phillips because yeah. instead of getting Ronaldo, they really needed a Calvin Phillips type player. Um, but you know, they went ahead and messed that up as as they love to do. Yeah, the scum will never get him. They'll but never go to the scum. We have a question here for you from Darren Wong. Um, he's asking James or Harrison, who will you start? Both fit, both ready. Who who gets the start? Harrison. Agreed. Me too. I think I think I, I start I I start. Yeah, I think I start Jack simply because he's been in the system longer. Uh That's he knows number one reason why. Yeah. And uh I mean I'm not to say that Dan Dan James eventually won't supplant him, but for the time being, I think you uh you played Jack there. Uh, but like but give but give but give, but, give, but give Dan James a lot of time there as well. I mean, I think that you know, Bielsa has a very there's a you know Harrison seems to be on a very short leash with Bielsa at times. So I see him. He gets pulled. He gets pulled early quite a bit if he's not uh, not playing to his abilities. Would Bielsa sees something and he ends up getting pulled. So I think that Dan James. I think Bielsa. You know, the, it'll be it'll be quicker now that uh, that Dan James is on the club. Yeah. Uh, so this guy, Nick Glittle says, James is priceless. And I, I'm going to assume he's talking about you, James. That's what I would uh, say too. <laughs> We're all in agreement here. We're all in agreement on that. Uh, so yeah. Adriano has a question. Is Leeds a team that big free agents would consider joining? I would say Rafinha was a big free agent and mm -hmm. he came when you guys were first season. So. All right. Here's going to be another unpopular opinion. Unfortunately, I'm getting a lot of flack from I think recruitment and I've, I've been on Facebook talking in groups about this. It's an issue. Uh, I think the, 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 the issue is Bielsa sign year deals. Uh, Patty Kenny, a uh, former Leeds player, uh, brought this up uh, as an issue as to why we're not getting, we're not recruiting quality players over finding these diamonds in the rough, we're forced to find diamonds in the rough, is because of the, uh, the one-year contract situation, which kind of lends itself to, like, instability. You know, there's, like, when, when players want to go someplace, they don't want to go to a place where, you know, the, the manager could just up and leave the next year and not resign. So it's a, it's a situation where they want stability. They want to go to a place that's stable, that's committed uh, to a certain way of playing. And Bielsa, sure, Bielsa's a draw. I mean, he's one of the... He's one of the great managers in the world, but but at the same time, you know, you I think that's an issue. I mean, I think it's a real issue. I mean, it's, it's something that needs to be needs to be brought up at least. Um, but yeah, so there's there's a problem there. Well, um, I would say, you know, I know you guys are asking James this, and he is the expert. But based on our knowledge of, of it, I would say um, that even if a big free agent was interested in leads, um. Bielsa is not going to take any anybody. He's not going to get Ronaldo because Ronaldo wants to come to Leeds. Yeah, know? we can't afford the wages anyway. Right. But I'm saying that's another, that's another issue. You know? Even if you could, like even if like we could, we were, we were joking that if Messi were to come to Leeds, Bielsa would be the only manager in the world who just wouldn't play him because he's not fit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. like right. it doesn't matter who you are. If you're not up to, if you're not going to run and and if then then you're not you're not going to play. So right. um, so I think there may be some free agents who would say, oh yeah, I'd love to play there, but they may not actually get to play. Yeah, right. And then and then you got to think of it. Uh, so so that comes into their mind as well of like, oh, I could go and sign for this smaller club meaning meaning lower in the table new newer to the premier league um these days and oh i can take over and be the starter and be the this and the that but but that's not the case yeah i don't think anybody gets signed and walks onto the team i was surprised dan james played as soon as he did mm -hmm. but yeah. I think if jack harrison didn't have covid james he probably he wouldn't, wouldn't have because yeah but, but Dan, I mean, I think, and I think the issue there too is Dan James was seeing a lot of time with the scum, you know. So, I mean, he was playing, and uh, that was, you know, so I mean, it wasn't like he was sitting on the bench with the scum. He was getting a lot of playing time there. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, free agents are a way to go. But the thing is, I mean, they're free only because there's no transfer fee involved. But at the same time, there is our wages to be considered, 
and Leeds just doesn't have the money to pay like massive wages to high profile players. I mean, if we got a free agent, it would be somebody, I don't know, you know, like, a, you know, maybe like a Danny Ings or something, which would be bad. <laughs> you know, yeah, something like that, somebody like that, but somebody like that, yeah. as, as far as like the Ronaldo's and the, yeah, like, not, it, not, I think not, it comes yeah. down to it's like whether or not they want to play in that sort of system. I mean, the the the, the, the practices I've I've read and heard from you, James, that that, that Leeds practices are brutal. Yeah, they are. And and you know, some quality free agents aren't necessarily going to want to practice that hard. You know, especially if they're, older, especially if they're older established. Yeah, you know, yeah, an older an older established free agent with really nothing to prove. They feel like they've proven everything they can from their, at their former club is not going to want to go and then have to, because the also places a lot of emphasis on, on practice. I mean, mm -hmm. look, you, know, you, you have to perform in practice. Like it's a match, you know, there's no right. like practice mentality versus match mentality. They're the mm -hmm. same, you know, yeah. so you practice, you better be ready to go. You know, you better be strap right. it on and <laughs> kick some ass. You know, because that's, that's going to be it. The, um, also kind of a, an established pecking order too. You have to earn yeah. your way onto yeah. Bielsa's pitch. You just don't exactly. get it because we paid fifty, sixty million dollars for you. You're not yeah. going to that doesn't give you an automatic starting position because your price tag. I mean, it, it, in some teams that is how it is done. We spend all this money for you. Get out there. But I don't see that happening with Bielsa. I don't see it. it's like well, just because we paid forty million for you, it doesn't mean that you start. You prove it to me that you can Absolutely. get out there and do what I want. Absolutely. Oh yeah. No, uh, it's true. It's not like, like to me, there there's clubs like Chelsea where where it's whatever the club wants. If the club buys somebody and they say he's starting, and mm -hmm. like Man United where they they buy Ronaldo and they're like he's playing, Ollie doesn't really have a choice in that. Leads is one hundred percent the other way kick. around. Oh, <laughs> Leads is. Yeah, I mean, Ronaldo, the other Ronaldo, Ronaldo just stays on one half of the pitch. I mean, he never he never crosses over to the other half. I mean, he just sits there. It's almost like he's like cherry picking, you know. And he's just waiting for the passes to come to him so he can get a shot on goal and get it. I mean, it's that's it. He doesn't do anything else. Yeah. You know, I mean, he expects a lot more from his strikers. And for attacking players, I mean, you got to track. You have to play hold up ball. You have to do all these things. And that's, you know, that's the, that's what he demands. He's a very demanding manager. He's a purist. I mean, you know, Bielsa's a purist. And uh, he's one of the last of the greats, like I said. I mean, I, I told you all this earlier in the season. I mean, enjoy it while it lasts because we're seeing like a dying breed of manager. He's a dying breed of manager. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's remarkable to see so. I mean, I measure these moments. Yeah. Well, guys, it's it's been a great little tea time show that that we did, yeah. James. It's been great to actually have you take your time and not have to like rush through the lead segment. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds <laughs> me of last season it, a little it, bit. It, 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 exactly, it's nice. Exactly. I know. I know. Maybe, maybe we'll get another of these in another one of these in March or uh, yeah, early March. Yeah, or maybe once a month. Well, we'll add maybe one once, the, yeah, once a month. Do a uh, United check a state of the club uh, talk. Yeah. Um, so listen, we got we've got a, a good number of people here watching live. Do us a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and you know what? Share this video. Exactly. It, it does so much for for our channel. And the more you guys support what we do, the more shows we can do, the more special <laughs> the, shows we can and do. And the more we're gonna wanna do it. Yes, and the more we're gonna wanna do it. Um, <laughs> and and also if you get a chance and if we, we haven't hit upon your question or or if you felt that you you have something that you need to have heard. Go to our website, join our discussion uh, groups, and we will answer you. We're on yeah. there every day. We reply. I even reply to Mr. Tom's uh, handy pack, uh, handicap picks for the NFL. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know. Yeah. And like I, and yeah. Like I always uh, say, to you, join uh, Legion in New Orleans. We have a great discussion group there. We talk a bit. Uh, you know, we have people from ends, but we try to – you know, have some civilized uh, banter about the club, and uh, yeah, it's nice. So, you know, Legion United New Orleans on Facebook. Uh, you know, join a lot of a lot of the people who watch the show are members. Nice, <laughs> we appreciate that. Thanks, yeah. Adriano. <laughs> Tell your wife we are on Sesame Street. Absolutely, we are on Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, yeah, um, and we like that. I'm gonna get an Elmo to sit but, right um, between us. If if you haven't had enough of us today, don't forget that in what four hours? I so guess yeah, that's four, like hours, four hours. We will be back on the stoop and we will be going through all of the matches that happened this weekend with an emphasis on our weekend watch list matches, which were the North London Derby, Leeds United versus whoever they played. Um <laughs> what span? Uh, uh, Chelsea and Man and Chelsea, City, City and, uh, and... The, to me the best match until that North London derby uh, mm. Brentford Liverpool we're going to be we're going to be breaking down all of that and and much much more at... sorry lovey that Brentford game was way <laughs> no <laughs> way Arsenal not match. a chance <laughs> the, Ar the Arsenal match was a blowout this was competitive uh, back and forth back and forth but um, we will be back in just 4 hours so keep an eye out for that stream we would love to see you back here and um and if we're not talking about leads enough it's because you're not in the uh, it's not you're not in the comment section enough so get in there and troll us and we will do more leads content. <laughs> um, but for now, James, thank you so much for spending so much time with us. My pleasure. See you guys later today. Say it, James. All right. Leads, leads, leads. There you go. <laughs> Peace. Peace from Brooklyn, y'all.